Hey everyone, what's going on? Nick here, how are you? And in the world of cloud storage and ever expanding data requirements, the thought of ever running out of storage seems pretty downright odd. We're in the world of terabytes, petabytes, and now exabytes. We're constantly having to define new words in order to describe the types of data constraints that face us today. However, the real question is whether or not these digital storage mediums are evolving fast enough to keep up with our ability to generate ones and zeros at an unprecedented pace. With recent advances in DNA technology, we might be able to apply some of our own physiology into creating what's known as molecular memory, which just might be the most efficient way of storing data ever built. Let's check it out. DNA is nature's hard drive. It stores hundreds of thousands of years of evolution and sequenced genetic material in one small package. And while it definitely has its foibles, there's so much we can learn from it. A few years back, the US Library of Congress tried to document every single Twitter post ever made, and little did they know, at over half a trillion messages sent, the task seems pretty daunting. Likewise, companies like YouTube claim they upload almost 400 hours of video every single minute. Stats like that make it seem that even the most wildly efficient of data storage techniques seem obsolete at this point. The appeal is very simple and evident. DNA is small and compact, it can store tons of information, and it can last a very, very long time, try millions of years. In theory, one gram of DNA could store almost 455 exabytes of information. That's a lot of data. And if we could reach just 1% of that theoretical capacity, you're looking at the combined storage of 4.5 million terabyte hard drives put together. It's incredible. DNA isn't perfect, and it's not necessarily the best interactive archive to access information either. DNA is simply a storage holder and it's never had the biological need to access that information on command. It can just store a bunch of things at once and it doesn't have a really efficient way of pulling things out. However, that shouldn't completely dissuade you because DNA is both very useful and not so much to society. It can store years of information and it can be an almost unending archive of what we've done as humans, but you're not going to be running it on any operating system at least anytime soon. So in the future, I think data storage is going to be separated into two distinct categories. On one side, you have the long-term storage of information with pretty lackluster access methods, and then you have the short-term storage of that same data, but with very efficient and quite searchable access functions. Functions. That being said, whether or not you trust the hard-nosed reliability of chemistry or the transient electrical states of transistors, data is both a solution and problem at the very same time, and it's going to take a couple of years at the very least to figure out a solution to our problems. And as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.